Recently, several videotapes about a brutal monster went viral on the internet. Let's talk about Siren Head. Siren Head is one of those things that the internet loved to worship years back. See, back in 2018, a spooky Canadian artist created an even spookier looking creature. And for a good year and a half, this monster was all over the internet, whether if it was on YouTube, Let's Plays, or drawings. But of course, these days, you don't really see the guy being talked about no more. Since like all things that get too popular too fast, it unfortunately dies really, really fast. But we're not going to be talking about that. Instead, we're going to be going on the App Store and look at some Siren Head mobile games. These games are very fascinating to say the least, as not only do they completely remove any horror in these games, but they also are incredibly flawed. Thankfully, there doesn't actually seem to be that many Siren Head games on the App Store, but for the couple that are, they're pretty bad. So today, I want to explore some of these games and see just how strange they can really be. So without further ado, let's talk about Siren Head once more in these cheap Siren Head games. The first game we're going to be playing is TV Head 3D. Oh my god. How spooky. <laughs> now, before we actually go and play the game, we need to look at some of the details first. Looking at the App Store, this game has about three ratings that rounds up to a 4.0, with the only reviews saying that this is the best game ever. And the description reads, Scary Monster TV Head Horror Game Where You Survive and Escape in the Forest. Welcome to TV Head Horror and Scary Monsters Game- Yeah, yeah, you know the rest. Loading into the menu, it shows us three chapters that we have to complete. So without further ado, let's begin chapter one, which starts off with a story. You are driving to the town across a unknown forest, and unfortunately, the brakes have failed. And now the game begins. So right off the bat, there are so many problems that I have with this game that I honestly don't even know where to start. But let's just start from the beginning. The goal of chapter one is to quote, find the details, which is basically just some random items that is used to repair your car. But for some reason, the game just baby feeds you where they are and has arrows pointing where you need to go. And you need to do this stuff quick because Siren Head is already running at you. Yeah, so Siren Head in this game is naturally really huge, but despite this, he is slower than you. And you can even kill him since at the start of the game, you get to choose a variety of weapons. Oh wait, never mind. He just gets back up after five seconds. How wonderful. And after going through this strange jungle area, I managed to escape. Another huge problem that I have with this game is the ads. Not only do ads appear upon clicking any button, but more often than not, you have to click some of them twice in order for something to activate. So what you end up having is a game where a good 20% of the time is spent on just skipping ads. But even stranger than that is just the story of the game itself. So after the previous events of chapter one, we ride off into the city, but then Siren Head stops us because he's here now. And now the goal is to go into a police station and grab some more equipment. Only that this time around, Siren Head became small and is now in here with us, somehow. I would also like to point out that the graphics of this game are questionable. Now, I'm under the philosophy that gameplay should always come first and then worry about graphics later. But good god, this is what the escape route in Chapter 2 looked like. Where am I? So after being spoon-fed where all the items were, I then hijacked a police car which concluded Chapter 2. So, we've completed two-thirds of the game now, and I've experienced multiple flaws in the game in just a few minutes. How do you think they made it even worse? Well, my friend, I present you Chapter 3, where according to the story, you're now in a battlefield, and you spawn in the same area that you were in in Chapter 1, and now have to kill Siren Head. But this time for real, not like the beginning where he died like five times. As you can imagine, the boss fight in the end wasn't very good. The way Siren Head kills you is by literally dragging you into him if you get too close. So if you don't kill him quick enough, well, good luck, because you have to restart the whole game again. You can stun the monster with your camera, but he still drags you in nonetheless. The weapon that I was using was the M4, which despite being a really powerful weapon, the damage according to its stats did one. So after dying to Siren Head three times, I pretty much gave up and decided to get an RPG by watching a gambling ad. After that, I was finally able to kill him, and that was that. So in conclusion, this game was pretty silly. There isn't really much good that this game manages to do. The game feels clunky, the environments are a fever dream, the story makes no sense, and there's too many god dang ads. How a reviewer wrote this off as the best game ever will forever remain a mystery. So let's just move on to the next game.
The next game we're going to be playing is Traffic Light Head SCP Monster, where instead of a tall creature with a siren on his head, it's instead a traffic light. How original. Reading the description, the game says, get ready to escape yourself from scary hunted forest. You car got an accident in a jungle and your car got crashed. Now you have to find some safe place to spend your night. And looking at the game itself, it's gone over 26 ratings that rounds up to a 3.8. So the first thing I notice is that this game is very similar to the previous game we've looked at. The game starts in 2007 and has you riding in a car, but once again, you crash for no reason. And now you have to do this level-based system of doing random tasks until you finish the game. The first objective that you have to do is to find height and climb to know where you are. Huh. But even after going on some hills and looking at the pretty fog, the objective wasn't completed. There was also this flashlight on the grounds that was really hard to pick up since the hitbox was really strange. But after picking it up, I noticed that there was a direction system for you to use. So once again, the game just tells me what to do and where oh to go. God. And once I went up this house, I saw the spooky traffic head monster, which for some reason had this really long cutscene of just him walking. The next objective was for me to find a camera so you can make it witness, whatever that means. But there was a problem. I couldn't find a camera anywhere. For whatever reason, the map in this game is just a wide open environment. And the directions this time around was just pointing to Siren Head. Oh wait, sorry, I mean Traffic Lighthead SCP Monster. So needless to say, I couldn't find it. As even after 20 minutes of walking around doing nothing, there was just no camera in sight. There are landmarks in this game like dead bodies and random houses, but again, they don't harbor anything. So I'm gonna cut this game short. I know it doesn't really seem fair to review a game and only play the first two levels, but looking at some of the previews, it doesn't look like I missed anything. And honestly, I wasn't really planning on playing 10 levels of this crappy mobile game. There was also a bunch of other glitches I noticed too, like the camera randomly snapping in any direction, weird plant physics, seriously, what is this? And some of the chunks not loading in, making the map look like some kind of ocean. So I'll be moving on to the next game. The third game we're going to be playing is Evil Scary Escape Games 2022. And to be honest, this might be the worst game that I'll be playing in this video, which you'll see why in a minute. So not even starting the game, and you can already tell that this is going to be magical. With the description reading, Best Evil Mission Horror Games in Terrible Environment, Making Escape Plan After Completed Mission in Scary House. And the only review is saying that this game has too many ads, also AI is bad. So the first problem that I have with this game is, Jesus Christ, the reviewer was right. There are so many ads placed in this game. Now, remember when I said in the first game how it had too many ads? Well, this one takes it to the next level. Because no matter what button you click on, even if you clicked it by accident, you will get an ad promoting some gambling website. And the worst part is that more often than not, the game typically has you click multiple buttons as a sort of chain. Meaning that the moment you finally skip an ad, you will still have to click another button before you can even get in the game. To put this into perspective, imagine on YouTube every time you clicked on a comment section, tapped on a playlist, or rated a video, you would get an ad talking about how kids should try this fun casino game. It's obnoxious, and having nearly a third of your game time just watching ads is awful. And saying that this is a game is being nice. The game starts with you randomly crashing a car into a tree, saying that car collapsed, be hurry and go to some safe place. And good god, how big is this car? So, Siren Head in this game is not great. Not only is he the scale of a human for some reason, but his AI is completely funked. He doesn't even notice you half the time even if you're right next to him. And when he does, he does this 360 around you, and then a cutscene plays where he hits you, and you die. He's also incredibly slow in his idle state too, so dying to him is basically impossible. Because of this, the game just feels really empty. And it doesn't help that you yourself are really slow too, and you're in another wide open environment. The map as well also has several other problems, like some of the houses not being to scale, and even some chunks the developer just straight up forgot to add. Even ignoring these problems, the game is still bad, because the way you win in this game is by going to these light boxes from level to level. But the problem is that some of the levels just have you walk 50 feet. I got around level 3 to 4 in this game where I needed to go into a house, but by this point I got lost and I didn't know what to do, as moving in this game was an absolute crawl. And it's not like Siren Head was just gonna pop out of nowhere because he was miles away from me. So the game just ends up being boring and empty. And also for some reason, the character's hand is just a dev texture. So I'll be leaving this game off here. Don't worry though, you probably didn't miss anything with this. So on to the next game.
So the next game I'll be playing is Lighthead the Bigfoot Monster. Oh shoot, it's the real Bigfoot. Reading the description, the game says only way to escape from scary jungle is to held your nerves and play with your strategic mind. Okay, but can any mobile Siren Head developer not speak broken oh, English, please? <laughs> and looking at the ratings, it's gone over a 3.6. So unlike the last three games we've been playing, this one starts out with a fully fleshed out cutscene, if you can even call it that. The cutscene shows us a bunch of people partying, and then Siren Head comes in, and kidnaps a random girl, because why not? And now we have to go hide somewhere for safety. Surprisingly enough, this game gives you a gun. In the main menu, there's a shop that allows you to buy various guns and flashlights. Although the pricing seems to be a bit weird. I don't know why a wooden torch is more expensive than an actual flashlight, but whatever. To my knowledge though, there isn't any way of finding spare bullets. So once you run out, you won't be able to fire again unless you watch an ad. But despite that, you might as well not even have a gun anyways, as the monsters in this game are incredibly tanky. Wait a minute, what are these things? Yeah, even though this game is supposed to be about Siren Head, there's for some reason these zombies, I guess. In fact, in the half an hour of footage I got in this game, Siren Head only appeared once, so I don't even know why they decided to put him in here. The zombies in this game are about as bad as you expect. They are slow, have bad pathfinding, etc. The visibility in this game is also really strange. You have a flashlight in your loadout, but it doesn't really help as the map is coated with either an orange or blue fog. And also, the camera tends to snap a lot too, so it gets even more disorienting. And as for the gameplay, it's basically just going around in circles, doing random tasks until you finish the game. The first objective I had to do was hide like I said previously. But after that, I then had to find a cell phone, restore its battery, find a key for a door, turn on some power, and just more random puzzles that don't contribute anything to the game. And also, because the map is yet again a sprawling forest, 90% of the task, I had to end up clicking an ad so that it can tell me where it was. There was even this one level where a helicopter was crashing, and a soldier was following me as a bunch of zombies were chasing us. For some reason. Out of curiosity, I decided to click the ad to see where the helicopter was, and... What? 75,000 feet? Was this guy expecting me to walk for a good hour or two? You can't even do it anyways because you'll hit the edge of the map moments later. So it was probably a glitch. But yeah, that's about all this game has to offer. What happened to the girl that got kidnapped? I'm not sure. I'm not really planning to stick around and walk around this forest for another hour doing essentially nothing. So I'll just be moving on now. The last game I'll be playing is Dash Racer, a game where you hop into a vehicle and start crashing into the spooky siren heads. Escape the Siren Head Deadly Town. Welcome to the idiosynatric gameplay of newly created Game Dash Ra- Okay, you get the point. Looking at the two reviews, both of them gave this a 5-star rating, with one of them saying it was scary and amazing. And saying that this game is amazing is kind of an understatement. Seriously, the game just consists of you running over Siren Heads. That's it. <laughs> According to the story, Siren Head has attacked the town, make a way out to escape from the town. However, in spite of that, you can't escape the town, as it's just an infinite line. The rule states that you need to crash into Siren Heads for points, but you can't crash into traffic, because that makes sense. Okay, but for real, this is legit the entire game. When you hit the Siren Heads, they turn into a Gmod ragdoll, and you're given money. You can also do things like speed up your car and slow it down, but yeah, that's about it. There's nothing really else to say. It's just a funny ragdoll simulator. I don't know who's out here finding this game scary, though. Honestly, this might as well just be a bonus section because of how short it is. Alright, and with the last game covered, we can now move on to the end of the video. I give this a 2 out of 2. Would recommend. So, that was the last game that I'll be looking at in this video. I mean, I don't really have much else to say about these games. It's Siren Head, but this time in a race car. So yeah, as expected, mobile game developers have once again turned a fairly spooky subject into some kind of fever dream. Now, if it wasn't obvious, this is the end of the video. But before I go, I would like to point out that as of uploading this video, the channel has now become 5 years old, which is pretty cool. It is pretty neat how much can change in just a few years. As now, 5 years later, I'm talking about... Siren Head. And I don't really expect to be going anywhere anytime soon, so here's to another 5 years. And yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you sometime in the future. Goodbye.